You can drop it down again. Upward knee pressure. I'm gonna grab here, right here in this middle handle here to be able to pull myself underneath. So I need to be able to, because right now, if you see here, I'm at an angle here. So I don't want that. I want to be able to stack my wrist over my elbow to be able to pull straight down into my lap. So, pulling myself under and supinating my hand at the same time. Key is to keep yourself supinated. I don't want any of this around any of the, the sets. Always supinated. So I'm just going to pull straight down. So this is all lat. I'm only going to pull up here. This is a contractual base exercise. If I bring my shoulder up too high, then my shoulder has to travel through a range of motion that isn't all lat. There's going to be teres at the beginning and bicep and brachialis. Again, I'm, I'm literally just trying to isolate lats here. Underneath supination. And down. Still keeping complete upward knee pressure into the pad. And I have three points of contact here basically. I have my knee up against the pad, my butt up against the pad here at the back, and then my hand. Okay. Stay supinated, don't let your hand rotate. So stay completely supinated, up and then down. Good. A little closer for you. Yeah, because that way, so then, yeah, exactly. On your left side, you'll be able to clean it up. So that way, when you're here, you're not like, leaning into it like all the way sprawled out, we actually want to kind of stay right up underneath ourselves where it's like, if I had to, I could put this foot into the ground and I'm actually like ready to be almost in an athletic type of position here. So, starting from the top, pulling into place, knee down, upward knee pressure, hand pulling under and then down. I don't care if you're up against the pad, I don't want it to, to the point where you can't get full range of motion from a contraction. So the goal is then to stay upright a little bit more. We still have an oblique crunch. Like we still have our obliques crunched over, so we're engaged with our oblique. Yeah, I just don't want like this. Yep. So we're just gonna pull down. And you see I'm really fighting to keep my hands supinated the whole time. As soon as for me, it's like as soon as I lose the ability to stay supinated, I've gone too far. It's like I can't stay supinated there, but I can here. This is my, that's how, that's my wheelhouse then right there. Perfect. Much better than this side here. Correct, yeah. Really, like the only 
only spot that we have on the bench here is really just the, just our chest. Just here. So. Might be a little different being short on the track. Well, but it's, it, no, you're not that much shorter than I am, and these, the, this, this, the dimensions of this are, are adjustable. Yeah. So you can drop this to be closer to it. Like I have to drop it to be closer because you know, Nick's arms are a lot longer than mine. So you shouldn't have a problem.
up for a second. When you come down, we want to stay in alignment with the cable. So hips away. Now, as you contract, hips towards. You see the, feel the contraction when you throw your hips? There you go. Yeah, exactly. You get that crest right here at the bottom, right here. Good. Get a good stretch there. Good. Very good. Good job, Joey. Yes. Good. And back to the heart. Single arm row, okay, that's where you can start to get a lot more of it. And then this is then where we can actually get more stretching in too. Method behind the madness. So as I do each rep, I'm pushing my hips away as I fully 
lower the weight and get myself into the fully lengthened position. And then as I contract, I sink my hips back into my into that pocket. So that way I can get fully contracted in a fully shortened range for the lat. You don't have to do that, but if you're gonna do a single arm lat pullover, it's a way to take the movement from being a good movement and make it into a great movement. curling up and trying to extend your fist out like this. As you, you see that looping motion I did? It's like sets, like, it sets, that's why you gotta be under control and it can't be heavy. And so it's just a way for us to get more out of the center portion of the movement without having to load this with 45 pound dumbbells. And then, if we can get stronger within this, it just allows us, anytime that we can pretty much do something where we can reset and make the movement harder, that brings the actual load down, it gives us more of a room for progression within that movement. Because you'll notice that like with a lot of the leg training that we're doing, Nick is able to pretty much max out some of the stuff we're doing. And we're trying to find ways to make that movement harder because we're literally running out of room to load. So. And load is not, not obviously the only metric for progression. We can do more reps. Or we can also do more volume, where we just start add, adding more working sets. The issue with just simply adding more working sets is at some point, the amount of stimulus our body requires to get an adaptive response outweighs our maximum recoverable volume. So like the maximum amount of volume that we can do that our body will actively and actually recover from. And if that happens, and you're spinning your wheels and it's time to do a knee load. really cue like as you're up here at the top you're trying to extend your fist out like that you're not going to be able to do it quite like that because of the counterbalance Good job, it's lower. I mean, I can't. 
Uh. Oh, fuck. guys that's a wrap for today's workout and thank you guys for tuning in it was a really good one with Jordan he came down from Daytona Beach uh, if you guys don't know him uh, Jordan's one of my athletes he turned pro at nationals with me he was my first pro card as a coach so kind of always a special time to have him in town it's the first time we've gotten to train together since us actually both turning pro so it was good to get the ability to run him through workouts cue him up a little bit so that we can take back some of those teaching points to Daytona and implement them in his own training I want to say thanks to Nick as always for being there running us through the workout and giving us all the cues and everything so thank you guys again for tuning in make sure you guys subscribe hit the like button and be ready for the next video every two weeks on mondays thanks guys